Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. I am reporting live from Chiang Mai. Um, there's been a lot going on in my reality. Uh, some of you have probably been following me online, on Instagram, or my ex-boyfriend, Faraday. Um, there's been a lot of updates coming from his end, <laughs> uh, and I'm going to share from my end right now. But um, basically, I'm here in Chiang Mai because I really needed to get away and be in fresh energy. And if you don't know, I used to live here for four years, um, from 2016 to 2020. I lived, ba I based in Chiang Mai, even while I was traveling for half the year, I would keep my house here. And so I have some very close friends. And also up here in the nature, one hour north of Chiang Mai, there's a place called Cheng Dao. And for me, it is a very spiritual place it's like my place to go and recharge and connect back to myself connect back to the earth connect to spirit all the things you might hear random airplanes going over because that's the thing about Chiang Mai is we're all underneath the airport <laughs> um, but anyways uh, yeah so I'm up here for a week and I'm super excited I've already been getting so many downloads just getting clarity getting perspective because it is such a intense energetic bubble living on Copenhagen one because the energy there if you've never been you will not understand until you go there the vibration is very high uh, and also because it's a very small community so whatever is happening is like amplified you know like we're kind of in this little fishbowl like you go outside and you can't not run into people and everyone knows everything that's going on. So it feels really nice to be out of that bubble for a minute. Um, so life update for me. Um, you know, I made the last podcast about Faraday and I and um, <laughs> it's been really hard. Like for friends who are just barely coming into, like friends who are traveling and don't really know what's going on, because it's not like I'm going around updating everyone <laughs> unless they ask me. Um, but uh, one of my very close f people in my life was asking me yesterday, like, hey, I heard what's going on. Like, are you okay? He's like my brother. And I just told him, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of feels like it's been like this waking nightmare, like since I got back from Japan. So it's like a month and a half ago. And I can handle a lot because I have been through a lot and because I'm this old soul. Uh, and also at the same time, it has been fucking hard, like emotionally, psychologically, in my body. My body is very tired from dealing with everything. Um, and one of the main things that was really hard was just that, like, it brought up so much of my past trauma with my dad, uh, having, like, like, my dad would hurt me. <laughs> and be abusive and then gaslight me and act like I was the one being dramatic uh, and just say like, I didn't do this or, you know, just like you're being, yeah, go to your room until you're better, like, or, or like go on a shopping spree with me and try and buy his, his way back into my emotional approval. Um, so uh, having Faraday like betray me and hurt me in such a public way also, um, and for me that's like a very big deal, like it's one thing to make a mistake, it's another thing to blast it all over social media. Uh, it just feels like even more like disrespect and not valuing who I am. Um, and then to act like he didn't do anything, like act like everything's fine and I'm the one being dramatic. Like this really triggered a lot and it was good in that way because I looked at my past trauma and I processed it and I separated it from what was currently happening and I worked through it the best way I can, like we're all doing the best that we can. Um, and then I realized that, you know, we really create our reality. So this is why I made like the second breakup podcast where I was like, no, I'm not going to just be one of these women that just hates men and be like, this is another example of a bad man in the timeline. Like, I'm like, we can all grow. Like, I have so much energy for holding vibrational space for people to grow, men and women. Because I know that I've made a lot of mistakes in the past and I've grown from them and I've become, you know, who I am today. And I'm very proud of who I am today. I'm proud of who I, how I show up in the timeline. And I'm proud of the fact that 
I'm loyal and authentic and if I make a mistake I do my best to own it and take responsibility for it you know and do my best to like you know make it right and so I know that people I know everyone has that potential um so that's why I made that second like breakup podcast um like it's titled am I a victim if you haven't seen it this is what I'm referring to and I recommend listening to it um about how I'm holding vibrational space for basically for Faraday to come to realization and like get it, you know? And uh, a week from yesterday, he took ayahuasca and we were not in a good space. Uh, We were just like barely talking to each other and just kind of handling life things like, oh, you left this at the house or can you help me with this thing or like whatever, but just like 3D reality stuff. But uh, And a big part of that was because he was posting so many things that were triggering for me on social media and then telling me that he didn't have to, he doesn't have to take responsibility for it at all and doesn't care about my emotions. And then I made the breakup podcast and then he messaged me saying he hated me. And so we're just like, that's, that's where we're at. We are where we were at emotionally, very dramatic. Uh, but I heard through a friend that he was taking ayahuasca. So even though we were in this like not super great emotional connection state I still sent him a message like the night of his ayahuasca and just said like I'm sending you positive energy on your journey tonight because this is what we do you know like I care I still care about him as a person the, they say the opposite of love is not hate it's apathy so if you still have feelings for someone even if they're like angry feelings you still care about them because if you didn't care, they wouldn't just, they literally wouldn't be in your reality. You wouldn't think about them. You would just be like, you would just see them in like nothing, you know? Anyways, so the night after his ayahuasca ceremony, I woke up to a message him with him telling me he loves me. And I could just feel, I can feel him. Like all night long of his ceremony, I could feel him. He was in my dreams a lot. I think I was sending him my energy and um anyway so I woke up with the message of him saying he loves me and I just told him I said I will always love you you know like you don't go through all this stuff with someone and just be like fuck you like I'm not that person I honor and I value and I was 100% in on this relationship um and so it's like that those feelings just don't go away of course I'm still angry and I was like hurt and I am hurt still and all these things but I still love this person and then he told me he's like I have some things I really want to tell you are you up for meeting with me and I was like I don't have any emotional bandwidth to deal with your gaslighting I I like I literally cannot handle being hurt anymore by you like I like my hands were like shaking when I was messaging him. I was just like, I don't know if this is a safe thing for me personally to walk into because I don't know what I'm walking into. And in the past, you have just used opportunities for connection to try and convince me of your reality. And that's just not going to work anymore. And he was like, no, no, I want to say I'm sorry. I want to do it in person. So I met him on the beach in front of his house. I didn't want to go in his house. And we met and yeah, he just told me that he realized like in the ceremony he saw and felt from my perspective everything that had happened and realized how much he had really hurt me and he could feel like yeah I was all like me I was Brittany all the way in on the relationship and he wasn't he didn't value the relationship in the same way and he wasn't taking it seriously and um, we basically just like cried together for like an hour and me just sharing my feelings and kind of like resharing everything that he, like the things that were still hurting me and saying them to him and then having him say, you know, yeah, I, I, f- I feel that and I'm really sorry. And for me, this was really healing because, um, it like, you know, I was saying like, it, we, when we go through trauma as children, it's like subconsciously in our adult life, we are trying to recreate this situation that reminds us of our trauma we don't want it to be as bad right but we want it to be close enough that it triggers the emotional reaction and the belief systems come up consciously and then we want to have a positive outcome so that we can heal this from our childhood right this is normal this is you know this is like what happens in our lives so if you're not conscious of this 
and you keep attracting in people that remind you of your parents, this is why. <laughs> like, this is normal. So don't think you're crazy. Uh, but when you become conscious, you can, when you become conscious of this reality that you attract in things that are, um, you know, old patterns that are activating belief systems that you don't want anymore, then you can work with it and you can see the belief that you are no longer, it's no longer serving you and you can let the belief go. And then that external thing will stop that person or that situation will stop coming into your life. But you have to ask yourself, why is this happening? What is this reminding me of in the past that is triggering for me or what belief system got put in me that keeps attracting in this person or the situation? And I realized a lot, like I was like, wow, um, yeah, th first off it was this whole thing of attracting in someone like my father who is very powerful but narcissistic and someone who has the same type of qualities or the same energy and who's gaslighting me and like kind of using me as a prop. Like my dad would like use me as like this shiny, like, um, almost like a trophy like look at how beautiful she is look at she's really good at her grades in the church she's doing everything she's supposed to and she's like the poster girl you know so he was like using me as his yeah like his showpiece and I felt like subconsciously Faraday was kind of doing that at the beginning of our relationship like look at how amazing she is I know he was in love with me but I also feel this ego part of him was like like he even one time we got high on weed. It's like one of the few times he smoked weed with me and he literally told me and we joke about this. So this is a joke between us now. But back then it really pissed me off. He was like, yeah, you're kind of like this gold necklace. Like if I'm a gangster, you're like my gold necklace. Like I I'm you're like basically like I'm showing you off to the world. Like you're like kind of this shiny thing that is showing how valuable I am because you're standing by my side. And I was like dude, that is not okay. <laughs> like you can't, I'm not someone's shiny necklace <laughs> and you're not a gangster. Like you're a fucking white boy who was raised in a rich family. Um, anyways, so I want to talk about what happens next in the timeline with Faraday and I recently, because this brings up more learnings for me, from me. Um, so after Faraday did ayahuasca, yeah, it was super great that we had some sort of a shared reality again. I don't think, you know, it's not grounded, but he at least realized what he, um, how much he affected me and hurt me. And, and, you know, there was a lot of healing between us during these c couple days where he was, we were both just getting downloads of things that we wanted to say sorry for. And like one thing that he said was like, I'm really sorry I wasn't the man that you needed me to be or you wanted me to be and he even said like I realized that I was leaning a lot on the alien stuff because at least that made me special for you like I didn't feel worthy of you and so I thought okay that at least this is something that makes me stand out because like why would you want me just for being me and I was like I wanted to just love you <laughs> like I was in love with you not like you as the alien guy I was in love with Ferdinand Beck who was like wakes up in the morning and <laughs> talks in a high-pitched voice to all our animals and makes jokes and we are just goofy together and we just love each other and we're having fun and we make amazing sex and like you know like we're just always on some adventure together and it's like we're always in this constant like it feels like we're just constantly in this reality tv show together of just like all these amazing magical things happening around us like that's the version of of reality and I just wanted to enjoy it together and the whole time we were together he was like trying to be more conscious trying to be more awake trying to be more and it was because he didn't love himself he didn't accept himself with where he was at now and no matter how much I loved him and accepted him for where he was at now it wasn't going to be good enough and at the same time I real I said to him I'm really sorry that once I was conscious aware that you weren't what I needed in that moment which was for someone to be a little bit more emotionally balanced like and emotionally in their hearts so that it, they can hold space for me like he was so afraid of any type of deep emotions they were so triggering for him that he would disassociate and then try and convince me to think like he was which was disassociating so then even when I started doing that I started to get suicidal like I I haven't really shared this much, but like it was a pretty dark time for me, especially I'll go into that more why in a minute, but like 
basically I said to him, I'm really sorry that once I realized you weren't what I needed in that moment and a partner, I'm sorry that I stayed and then got angry at you that you weren't that person and like wanted him to catch up with me, you know, like I'm like from an emotional maturity and depth perspective. And that was really healing for him to, to hear that. Like, like the one hand, like he, who he, if he was, Honestly, if he was just who he was and just owned where he was at, like, I can vibe with that. I can't work with someone who's gaslighting me and trying to act like he's something that he's not, like something that he's not yet embodied. So it's just this, like, it's like, (laughs) I'd rather him just be himself and be here than pretending like he's up here vibrationally and it's all mask and not real, you know? And I'm not saying this is like one is better than the other. I'm just trying to, you can say like even a dot on a map like here and, but you're actually over here and I'm just in the middle here. Like what's going on? Are you one direction or the other? Like, can I don't know what to play with vibrationally here because you're saying you're this version of yourself, but your act, like your actions are showing that you're not, you know? And that was, anyways, so that was a big healing for us. And then after ayahuasca, he was basically not able to sleep. And um, I have dealt with many friends who have gone into psychosis. So this is like when you're literally not grounded, your mental construct, your personality construct is not grounded in your body in a way where it feels good for you. And like your spirit is literally trying to leave your body because it's no longer can like hold the energy moving through in a way that is working, right? Um, trying to like put this into word because a lot of times people say psychosis they're like oh that person's just crazy but like actually from a vibrational standpoint it's literally like you have peaked like you've gone beyond the ceiling of what your energy how much energy your body can handle going through so you have like it's like this cup of water and the energy is water that's just like overflowing so you have like too much energy going through your body than what your body can ground and hold in that moment and sleep is a big part of this if you don't get enough sleep It's like your body is not connected to this 3D reality enough. You're like, you're, it's like you played the video game for too long. You haven't logged out and like let your person like recharge. And this is what was, he was happening was he already had gone into spirit so far during ayahuasca and also wasn't getting enough sleep. So he wasn't grounded in this reality enough. Um, And I have experienced so many friends who have actually gone into full psychosis where they're like no longer able to recognize this reality anymore and um, have become very violent, have killed themselves, like like lots of negative things in this 3D reality. But in their mind, they're not here anymore. Like their personality construct is somewhere else, different dimension and spirit, whatever you want to call it. But they're just not here or not here enough to be able to be in control of their actions. So Faraday was trying to act like he was okay because also when you're inside, you're close this this close to going to full psychosis, you're in a subconscious panic because you're trying to ground yourself as much as possible. So you're almost trying to convince yourself and everyone around you that you're okay because if you admit that you're not okay, it's like you you're worried that you'll lose control completely and just go into full psychosis of like losing your connection to this reality. So I myself on a an acid trip that I didn't mean to take um, in about February. I I was supposed to take like 10 cc's of, of acid, which is a very small microdose. And a friend of mine accidentally served me over 100 cc's. And for me, in the past, that was nothing. I could take 100 to 200 and it was fine. But lately, I, I as a conscious, sober person, I've almost already hit my ceiling of how much energy I can move through my body. And when I was on this over 100 cc's of acid I could literally feel my psyche trying to split like multiple personalities going to different timelines and I would like look in the mirror and I could see all these other counterparts these versions of me whatever you want to call it like they were like overlaid and they were trying to take control of my timeline and I kept saying to myself this was very very scary and I haven't really shared this that much because it was so scary for me because I have never experienced like almost psychosis myself in this timeline And I just remember I kept saying to myself, I choose to be, I choose to live. I choose to be Brittany Bond as my personality construct in this timeline. Like, no, no, no. All these other counterparts, whoever else is trying to fucking take over my body. Nope. I choose to be fully myself in this timeline. And I choose to stay and I choose to stay and I choose to stay. 
So I basically whispered this to myself almost all night long until I was able to come more into my groundedness. Um, but it was very, very scary. And so I understand the reality now from a lived experience of how it feels when your psyche is trying to split and like, you know, you can shatter and like sometimes not come back together all the way. So anyways, Faraday was going through this, this last week. And so while I am still processing all of the pain and all of the things that have happened and there's still things that there's boundaries that I have asked for and they're not being honored by him, you know, for whatever. And that's fine. He's allowed to choose if he wants to honor my boundaries or not. But then I have to choose whether I want him in my life or not if he's not honoring my boundaries. (laughs) All of that was happening while he's on the verge of psychosis. So then it's like this, we'll just put it. So I showed up for him as best I could. I even had him stay at the collective just because (coughs) I didn't want it to wake up and he died or something, you know, like if you have never been with someone who's in psychosis or close to, you don't understand how serious this is. It's very, very serious. And I am not going to live my life thinking I could have done something more for someone I cared about. So even though I was very, very angry at him still, and not sure if I even wanted him in my life in like a real way, I was going to be there for him until he got through this. Like that's, that's real. So I worked with the people on the Island that I know I was like calling people, making sure he got support backup. Um, and also doing whatever I could to ground him and support him. And also at the same time I had already booked my trip up here and so I was kind of in this panic moment the couple days before I was leaving like I don't want to leave unless I know he's actually okay and thankfully like the day before I left he really got some support from a healer woman that we both work with and it was the first time he felt safe in his body and like I could tell energetically that he was more back and grounded and he committed to working with her twice a week for the foreseeable future and she does like therapy work and also energy work like she's like a shaman woman so she's like good in this 3d reality and also she can literally be there in spirit with him bringing him back in his body energetically and i've worked with him and i I worked with her and i really i really know she's legit and hearing him say like i felt safe in my body and that you know like he feels like he's actually going to be okay i just started crying because i was like wow i didn't realize how much this was really affecting me I've been basically in fight or flight mode like survival mode this whole week just making sure he's okay while also at the same time kind of putting my needs and what I emotional needs physical needs like on hold because I was literally on call just making sure he's okay and this brought up a lot of stuff with my dad again (laughs) again another opportunity to heal your trauma I'm saying all this like laughing now because what else are you gonna do like again Sometimes I'm like, when you're this fucking conscious in your timeline, you're just like, this is all one big joke. And I just hope that I laugh more than I cry. <laughs> so anyways, my dad, in my, my dad's almost 200 centimeters, like six foot five, six, six. Uh, and er, so physically like larger than life, like this big bear man. Um, and I have a very distinct memory of me as a child, like, sitting on his shoulders and walking through the mall and just feeling like my dad's the biggest and most protective guy ever and I love him and I feel so safe so like this was my image of my dad is like protector bear you know um I hadn't gotten to teenagehood where I realized he was not able to host me emotionally so but just like physically he was able as a child as an early child to realize like to make me feel safe and protected and provided for and all these things right And then when I was seven, he got cancer and was in the hospital for six months and we thought he was going to die. And so suddenly like this, this person that was like my protector provider, like my man, you know, like my, the first, they say the first love of your life is your mother and your father. Like the first relationship that you have and that you see with the masculine and feminine are your caretakers. And so this masculine provider protector in my life was suddenly in the hospital and you know we were worried about money and then this is the same time period where my neighbor started sexually molesting me so like my biggest core trauma happened when my dad wasn't there to protect me and up until that time he was always very physically protective of me my sisters and my mom like 
you know, this is one thing he was very good at. Um, and so this got brought up with Faraday of like this person who is, you know, up until recently supposed to be like my protector, energetic, energetic safe space. And, you know, my man suddenly betrays me, hurts me and then needs my help. Like, and then is like in a space where I need to show up for him when I'm falling apart myself emotionally, like really going through it. And wow, that was really interesting to honor that and to realize that this is a pattern that I have is um, being with men that where it just keeps happening. Like they're ungrounded in some way where they're not able to show up for me and I don't feel safe anymore to lean on them you know and Faraday has like I, t I told this to Faraday and he was like I really honor that and my biggest excitement right now is to get grounded for myself first and to make sure that I'm okay and and then I want to spend the rest of my life like proving to you that even as a friend I can be this stable like grounded safe space for you emotionally physically energetically and I honor that he said that. And also like right now, I literally don't really put that much weight on anything he says, because when you're betrayed and your trust has been broken in such a strong way that mine has, I don't trust anything he says. Like his words right now are like blah, blah to me. Like it's what his actions are going to do that are going to show whether he deserves to be in my life or not. And even last night, there was something where I brought up feeling unsafe and a boundary that I have and he doesn't want to honor it so it's like okay this is great like I'm learning I'm taking the space and time that I need to really feel into what I need to feel safe in connection with him and connection with everyone and feeling a lot more lately that I really am going to protect my energy and my energy all of our energy is our this is our um, words this is like our values our value of who we are in the timeline is the energy that we share so like people think our value is our money but that is one energetic imprint of like how much energy we've put in the 3d world right and how much energy we're getting back um, but your energy is really like everything and I have spent a lot of my time this is something a big download I've been getting since I've been up here because I'm working with a girlfriend my friend Daria and she's basically going to be my manager now for all of my impact I'm making in the world all these beautiful things I'm sharing with all of you so now we're going to be building out courses and retreats and a lot more ways that you can benefit from my energy in a way where it's like literally impacting your life so that you can become the most empowered version of yourself and activate you in whatever way that you need. And I got this huge download yesterday that like, oh my God, I've been, all of this energy that I meant to give into the world, this like, I know who I am in the timeline. I know what impact I meant to make in the timeline. I've been giving that to my partner, just dumping all of this energy into them. And <laughs> That is not what I'm going to do anymore. I'm going to share this with all of you. The world, the collective deserves this energy. It's not meant for just one person. And something that I realized yesterday as well, getting so many downloads up here in Chiang Mai, uh, is that um, I know what contract I made as a soul when I came down to this timeline. I know that I am some sort of hybrid. I'm not fully human. If you, <laughs> if you don't know me personally, if you've only seen me on social media, you still should be able to catch this vibration. This is not fully human up in here. And that's okay. Like for a long time, I tried to hide this. I'm not trying to hide it anymore. I know that I meant to be here to guide the collective and to help all of you become your most empowered selves. And because I know my soul contract and because I know the impact, this huge impact I meant to make in the world, I kept trying to get my partner, whoever I was dating, not just Faraday, but past ones as well, to become my manager. Like, hey, support me, help me get out there, you know? And Faraday did this in a lot of ways by helping me with my podcast, like paving the way for me to connect all of you in the community and 
yeah, using his reach to support me. And I really honor that and appreciate that. But what I subconsciously was wanting was someone who was like literally leading me and, and kind of being my accountability buddy of like, like I, the thing to know is I have done all the retreats. I've had, I've, I've made courses. I've, I've like made all the impact on women's circles, like lots, everything that you can, I've, I've organized a women's festival. Like I've done all the things that I need someone to just be my buddy and hold me accountable and like, like guide me through it so that it's fun for me because it's like when you've already done it where's the growth in it but I know that I meant to make this impact anyway so trying to make my partners my manager but what was happening was the person that I actually need is someone who's comfortable being on the back end like you know that loves to build out the courses and be on the computer and do the do the the reach and all the stuff that I don't want to do anymore because I've already done it and I know how to do it but it's not my it's not my place I'm, I'm meant to be here in front of the camera like sharing my vibration with all of you anyways so Daria now that Daria is like I want to be that person like her her um she knows that she doesn't want to be the front end she loves supporting and being the genius on the back end and that's like such a symbiotic match for me it made me, it just landed yesterday where it just dropped in that like, I wanted my partners to be this back in person, but then I also know that the person I'm meant to be with is also a leader. Like everyone, all of this astrology, everyone has confirmed that I need someone with like Leo energy, someone who's like very, very um, balanced in the timeline and grounded energy and can like stand by my side as a leader to guide the collective as my divine masculine counterpart. So up until re now, up until recently, up until yesterday, I was wanting my partner to be two different things, the front end person and the back end person. And so either way, they were going to fail. Either way, they weren't going to be good enough. And so now that I have like my team and also not just Daria, but my friend Feta and like other people are coming up into the, into my vortex as, Hey, I want to build this out with you. Hey, yeah, we see the vision of what you're meant to share with the collective and we're going to support you on this vision. Now that I have this team forming around me in a way that feels really good and it's my soul family and I love hanging out with them already. And this is like what makes it all fun for me. Um, it clears up energetically the space of who actually is meant to be standing by my side, which is this Leo energy of like a king, you know, like th my, my counterpart, like energetic vibrational match. And that feels really good. That feels really like, Ooh, I can just land in that and just have my partner be someone I connect with on love and, romance and fun and play and you know sex and like just have it be simple instead of trying to make them be my business partner and my manager and like all the other things it's like no no you can just be my partner and also like be my partner don't just like be my partner and try and fuck all the women around me that come into my vortex or your vortex or whatever like actually honor that I am your goddess and your vibrational match and like make me feel like I am the only woman in the whole world that you see, you know, <laughs> getting a lot of downloads about open relationships since this last one. And I feel like I needed to go through the whole timeline of playing out my need for freedom because I had been so controlled growing up, which I totally honor. And now that I have literally hosted over 30 play parties, had like over 1,500 people come through my parties. Um, and played out a lot of different energetic dynamics, sexual dynamics, like just I've had my fun <laughs> and also been in a lot of different types of relationships. It's really showed me that I choose to be with a man that I love so much. I don't want to be with anyone else. And I've already kind of was landing on that with Faraday and I where we were hosting the play parties together and I didn't want to play with anyone else because I loved him and I just wanted to be with him. And I, I was happy to host the party for everyone. But my energy, I know how valuable my energy is and I wanted to keep it for myself and my partner. And he wasn't there yet. He wanted to keep sharing his energy with everyone, play and whatever, whatever. But that's not a vibrational match for me anymore and it's like such a beautiful thing to realize and super humbling and also like i'm here to tell you we're all figuring this out 
you know like it's not like Brittany Bond has all the answers it's like I'm just brave enough or crazy enough you you pick to sh bring you along on my journey of growth and so many of you have said men and women that you've learned so much especially recently with f me just raw sharing like what is going on in my life <laughs> Um, and I am committed to keep doing that, you know, and this is what this podcast is. Um, yeah, so just like some raw emotions is I'm still grieving everything with Faraday, still upset about everything and really mostly grieving the projection of what I wanted him to be and what I, he said he was, but what his actions were not lining up as of like the man that I want to stand by my side and choose to stand by my side. So um, I'm taking this week. I'm going to be here for the weekend and then I'm going to Qingdao for the week and then I'm back in Chiang Mai for next weekend and then I fly back home. So I'm taking this time up north to really like come into my own energy, connect with my soul family up here, build out my, my impact with all of you, with my friend Daria, who's my manager and take the space that I need to really get perspective on what I need next with my connection with Faraday and also give him the space to do his integration and embodiment and, you know, see what, what lines up, see what shakes out. And, of course, it <laughs> I'm such a deeply emotional person that sometimes when I'm feeling such deep emotions, it's like I can't even express them. It's like this well, like the water is all the way down in the bottom of the well and you got to go all the way down if you want to feel how I'm feeling. And other than that, my Aquarius rising is like, it's fine. Everything's fine. So just know I'm really going through it. And also, um, I have learned that the best person that can host me in my emotions is myself. And when you really fall in love with yourself and you really understand yourself all the way and you can host yourself, all you need is clean energetic space. And for me, that's going to Qingdao and being deep, deep nature, connecting to Mama Earth and therefore connecting to myself. And I get all the downloads I need. I get, I get all the recharging. I get everything. I get everything. I am fully supported by the universe. So that's what I'm going to do. Just gonna, I've been crying my way through Koh Phangan. Now I'm gonna cry my way through Qingdao and recharge my energy. Um, another reason why, I'm gonna go back to um, the reason why I showed up for Faraday this week is today, one year ago, my friend Kane um, died of a. We're not sure if it's a suicide or a drug, o like if it was an intentional drug overdose or unintentional. But I do know that he was very much going through his own version of psychosis and was having a very hard time in like living and playing the game of life in this timeline because he was so sensitive and he wasn't able to f have, he didn't feel that he had a safe space to feel his emotions. So he kept shoving his dark, emotions away his shadow side away and just kept trying to live in the light and that built up over and over and over again to him being um i think he was 30 when he died or 31 and yeah it just all kind of like slammed into him and then he couldn't really integrate it and embody it and yeah, so one year ago today, he passed away. And this is also like around the same time that I was, last year I was doing what Faraday wanted uh, or suggested, which was for me to disassociate from my emotions. So I was basically doing what Kane and him and Faraday were doing and disassociating from my own emotions. And it put me in a state where it's the closest I have felt since I was married to my ex-husband and in a cult, <laughs> it's the closest I felt since then to wanting to kill myself. And I have never felt like I would actually delete myself from this timeline, but I was in that space, that void of nothing matters. What's the point of anything? Just feeling very disconnected from my body. And so if you're in this space right now, or if you feel that you resonate with this, 
the thing I want to say to you is the best thing that helped me was to go into nature and fucking ground myself because, you know, we have this huge spiritual awakening that is happening in the world right now, but people, if you are not integrating and embodying your shadow side, which is the parts of you that you're not proud of and the darker emotions, then you're not spiritually awakened. Like this, I feel like this is one of the main things I'm meant to share in the timeline is that half of spiritual awakening is understanding the structure of reality and the other half is integrating it, embodying it to play out the game of life in the 3D. To actually take that knowingness and play the game and like be a better person and like make things in the 3D. Like don't disconnect. What I was doing last year was hiding on Copenhagen and not wanting to play the game of life because I had gotten in such a high, I'm putting this in quotations because I'm making fun of it, high vibrational state that I was disassociating. I basically was like, I don't want to play the game because playing the game in the 3D reality is a lower vibration. And the best thing I can do is just go back to spirit and like peace out. But you know, everyone who's in spirit right now wants to be down here playing this game because it is so beautiful to play this physical reality game. And we're actually affecting the whole universe in ways I will not get into right now, but like literally you are affecting what happens in the whole universe just by how you choose to show up in this quote unquote physical reality game of life that we're playing. And so the best thing that you can do is fucking play the game and be in your body and feel all of the emotions and get upset and make mistakes and do things, keep going, keep trying things and, you know, follow your mission in life. Like, why do you think I love giving people human design readings? Because it literally like gives them their mission and like drops them into their body. Like this, even if you don't want to get a human design reading from me, go get one from someone else. I don't care. But like use the tools that we have to get you in your body and motivated and inspired and empowered to go do what you're meant to do in the 3D reality because things matter. Yes, we can choose. When you understand the structure of reality, you understand, quote unquote, nothing matters. So we choose what matters. We get to choose what matters in this timeline. And for me, I have found out recently that my value system is creating safety for myself and the people that I love, which includes all of you, and creating connection. For me, connection equals connection to myself connection to the earth, connection to each other. And connection to the earth for me and connection to myself and connection to each other, all of this is connecting to source all, because we are all the same. We are all one. And when you realize this, you realize that when you play this game of life, you are literally playing out. You are, like we all have pieces of God in us. We are the spark of life and the spark of creation. And so by playing this game of life and doing things in the 3D, not perfectly, I'm not saying be perfect, I'm saying just keep going, keep trying, then we are literally giving the universe, God, source, whatever you want to call it, the ability to live through us and to experience the 3D reality through us. And the more that we are able to do this, and the, more, the more energy we get. Do you ever do something that like brings you satisfaction and you can feel like you're in this flow state and time doesn't matter anymore? and you get so much energy from it. This is what I'm talking about. This is doing the things that you're meant to do in the world. The universe, God, source, whatever you want to call it, will keep giving you more energy because it can live through you and experience life through you. And that is so beautiful. That is what we're here for. So I'm here to play this game of life and I honor, and I'm doing it in honor of Cain and Ella and Richard and Trilene and all of the people that I love and Zach, all the people that have left this timeline too early in my opinion because I wanted to be here with them. I wanted to be here holding their hands in this physical reality. And so many more that I won't name right now, but those are people that have affected my timeline in very big ways by leaving the timeline too early in my opinion. Uh, I'm doing it for all of you, all of you who have left. And I'm doing it for all of you who have stayed and chosen to live and chosen to play the game of life. And I honor you for staying. I know it's really hard. For most of my life, I have wondered why the fuck am I here? Because I don't understand why humans hurt each other. 
I don't understand why they destroy the earth. This is what I mean by I am some sort of hybrid. Like I literally came in like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you realize that you're hurting yourself, that you're hurting everyone when you hurt each other and the earth because we are all connected? And so I didn't want to play the game of life. I thought I just like, I was kind of like, no, all of you are crazy. Like, go away. I'm just going to hide away here on my safe coat by now bubble until I can go back to spirit, until the aliens come, until whatever the fuck happens. But I don't want to play the game. And recently I've realized, no, I, this is what I meant to do. So I'm calling in the support from my guides, from the universe, from God, source, to guide me and support me and give me this energy and give me all the things that I need in order to play this game in a way that feels good for me in order to make this impact with all of you in a way that feels good for me. So you can make that contract with your soul. You can demand your support to play the game. And I invite you to request and demand and declare whatever you need in order to feel supported and safe in your timeline, in order to feel good and have the energy flowing through you to play this game of life. Um... So, yeah, there's a lot more I could share. <laughs> um, but I think I will share it in the next podcast, probably tomorrow, just because this is a lot. And Daria is going to come get me and we're going to make amazing business plans right now. <sighs> yeah, I invite you to take a deep breath on that one. I guess the last thing I want to say is that when you are in alignment and you are allowing universal energy to flow through your body in a way where it is, it is free flowing, like as in, you know, negative beliefs actually are energetic, like constrictions in your body. So imagine like fear is like this constriction in your stomach and shame is this thing over here. And it's like these like black knots, like, uh, like literally like knots on a rope and the energy can't go through in a way that's free flowing. So when you release these negative beliefs, you release these, like you untie the knots, you, you open the connection, you open the free flow of energy th moving through your body. And when you're able to do that, the universe will just keep flowing more opportunities, more love, more connection, more energy through your body and through your life. And it will feel like everything is just lining up. Everything is just synchronistic. Everything feels easy and fun. And we're meant to have challenges. We're meant to grow. We're meant to feel pain, but it doesn't need to be suffering. Suffering is when you're experiencing pain unconsciously and you're choosing to be a victim. Everything is happening for us. Everything is for our highest growth. Everything is for us to go to the next level and have the next experience and become a more evolved version of ourselves, a more empowered, more in our power version of ourselves. So when you allow the universe to move this energy through you and you do the work to release the negative beliefs that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, that whatever, 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 that you're disconnected, that, you know, it's like these are such core, like, knots that are tied up in us when we are children. These are like core traumas that happen to us that it's not safe to feel your feelings, that you need to always be in the light, that, you know, like, you have to be perfect in order to be accepted. Like, fuck all of those things. When you can realize that you deserve everything in your life just for being your most imperfect, authentic self. Like, whoever you are right now, in this timeline, not who you're going to be when you have more money or you feel like you have the perfect partner or you feel like your consciousness is evolved to whatever the fuck vibration you think you need. No, no. Whoever you are right now is good enough for you to allow yourself to feel worthy of love and connection and to have all of the energy moving through your body in a way that is free flowing. And this is why when you when you're in my vibration, like right now, when you're watching me or you're listening to this, um, you feel activated. So many of you tell me this. I feel activated when I listen to your podcast. I feel like everything's going to be okay. I feel like I can receive more from the universe. I feel like it's safe to just let things flow 
and trust the universe and surrender to the flow. That's because the energy is moving through my body in a very fluid, free-flowing way. And by being in the energy of someone like me, you, your vibration is activated. The energy in your body starts asking you, why are you not letting me flow freely? Can we please just let this be? Can we work through, can we let, re can we relax? Can we surrender these knots that are blocking our energy and these constrictions? Can we take a deep breath and just let it <sighs> flow freely? So this is the activation. And I'm going to spend a lot of fun time in the future with Daria and the rest of my team building out more opportunities for you to receive this vibration and to be activated because what my biggest mission is is for all of you to feel your most empowered sexy embodied selves because when you're in that vibration you're allowing the energy to move through you in a way that is activating everything that is your heart's desire because really everything is there for us. We are the only ones blocking it. And again, when I say that, you need to release the shame that you are responsible because it's okay. I have blocked it myself because we just don't know. We're like, okay, I'm blocking it, but what am I doing? I don't know, I don't know, no, no, no. It's like, no, you don't need to get in a mind fuck. You need to take a deep breath. <sighs> And you need to know that there's people like me who feel it is my highest fucking excitement to guide you through the timeline so that you can become your most embodied self. So you're okay. You don't need to do anything right now except for relax and know that it's all coming. Okay, Daria's pulling up right now in her beautiful white BMW. So I'm going to go and I'm sending you guys all so much love.